And so now, um, the most exciting thing for me has been this year working with resource conservation districts who came to us in our society after the Dust Bowl. They were a societal response to the loss of our topsoil and to the dirty 30s. And so what we have now are regional districts that help uh, integrate soil conserving practices on the landscape for the producer. So if you have land, you can contact your resource conservation district and you can engage with them in how to implement what's, what will be carbon farm plans. They're known for conservation farm planning. They're known for being able to move NRCS dollars onto your land. But um, they're also now taking on carbon farm planning. And what happened is the Marine Carbon Project was nestled right out of this region. And it start the science and the idea of carbon farming is now growing. And as it grows, we're trying to institutionalize it and codify it within our CDs. Because as you align yourself with existing structures that have been on the landscape since the 1930s, you have institutional staying power. If you can align with those already existing forces, land trusts and our CDs and working with the NRCS. So the idea was that don't just build carbon farming outside of these institutions work with them and the RCDs are like I call them like this sisterhood so <laughs> around here it is it's like this sisterhood executive directors with this amazing scientific background who come and have on the ground experience and the science mind they're young and smart and I'm so proud to know them <laughs> so come on up My name is Nancy Scolari, and I'm the executive director at the Marin Resource Conservation District. Um, thank you so much for being here, um, coming out to West Marin County. Um, I think I'm supposed to say a little bit about uh, where we are and what our districts are about. And so um, we are in West Marin, and you, you drove here today and were able to see how beautiful um, this landscape is. We are um, out that way is the Pacific Plate. This way is the American Plate. That way is Tamales Bay. And we're sitting on the San Andreas Fault just before it enters into the bay. Sorry if you didn't already know that. But, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but this is the best place to be in an earthquake, I would say. Uh, so, um, so we primarily assist, I have a board of directors, and they're all um, agricultural producers in some way, shape, or form. And um, they direct and guide us in how we implement conservation practices out on the landscape. Um, so we develop programs around that, around what your needs might be. And so um, we have a few different programs. Um, one is the called our affectionately called our cow program, conserving our watersheds. And that program provides um, financial assistance, contractors, and um, engineering tech expertise out to folks out, out on the landscape who actually want to implement practices. Um, and so we get all those projects done. It's quite successful. We have a pretty great sign up around that. But one of our other projects is this one here, our Marine Carbon Project. Um, we've been a part of this um, since the beginning and uh, has been quite a ride and it's been quite interesting to be a part of the science. So um, to get into kind of what it takes to, um, to be in the program itself. I'm gonna kind of take you, shepherd you through um, like the sign up period, what you would get at the end of it. I think that Rebecca probably provided you with a lot of the details around carbon sequestration, so I'm gonna try to avoid a lot of that. But this is the first thing you will see. Um, if you are in this district, um, you would get a card like this that would ask folks to sign up for the program. And so um, if you do not have not received this and you are in Marin County, then you should let me know that because um, I should get you on the list so that we can call you next time around. But the main goal for us is that we are going to be completing 20 carbon farm plans in the next three years. Um, so we have funding to do this. Um, we're being supported by the State Coastal Conservancy. Uh, 11th Hour Foundation, 
and also the USDA. And so they all see value in making this happen across the landscape. So um, we also list a variety of the different practices that would be implemented, but Rebecca went through some of those, so we can go on. Once you call in, um, the next thing that would happen is that we would um, actually have you fill out an application. And so there is a landowner application that kind of looks like this. And I'm happy to give you copies of that so you know what to expect and what you should be looking for next year. Um, we would arrange a site visit out with you. And at that site visit, we have a variety of different technical expertise represented, and they'll walk the landscape with you and decide where it is you could make improvements on the property based on what your management ability is. We also have selection criteria, and we'll give you a list of that as well so you know what we're looking for. But uh, on that list, it's basically we want to see that people are going to follow through um, with what's in the plan. Um, you can do that in many different ways. You can do that through on your own, um, on your own accord, or you can do that through existing programs that are available through USDA, or programs that we expect to come, like some of the cap and trade dollars or mitigation dollars that are coming in the future. Some of the things we're looking for are big projects just like this one. This is Albert Strauss standing on his tarp um, on his methane digester, his, his manure pond. And so, uh, <laughs> very brave. He was willing to pose for that picture. <laughs> so, um, but those, that's sort of the end scale. Like that's like the top of the line Cadillac. This is what it's gonna take to reduce greenhouse gas em emissions. And um, those are one of the practices we might be looking for. Some of the others are, um, and Rebecca went through this, but it's riparian enhancement. So we have a program, we work with students and teachers restoring a watershed, and they go out and they develop a plant palette that's called climate, uh, climate smart planning, and they want to uh, plant trees that are gonna withstand different drought and flood events so that wildlife have all of the plants that they need during those events. So this is another practice that we would look at, that was, which is also sequestering carbon. And then things like compost application, and this is what um, a half inch of compost application looks like out at the Strauss Dairy. And then in the background, we're looking also at windrows and hedgerows and those types of practices. One of the other things we do is we come up with that list and the acreage and all that, and then we, we plop it into these programs. This is called Comet Planner. And you can look this up on your own. You can go online and do a search for Comet Planner. You can put in, I want to do five acres of reforestation, and out they'll pop a number of how much greenhouse gas you're reducing or how much carbon you're sequestering. It's very conservative, and we've been actually trying to refine this program with with um, the program modelers, which has been really fun. And then you ha we have a list. This is an example of a list of practices that once you look at the landscape, you're actually, um, you come up with your list of practices, the acreage, you put them into the Comet Planner um, program, and out pops all these numbers. And this is exactly what sort of impact you would have. Um, here I have this circle down below. I'm just going to skip to that. Um, on this particular land, ranch, at 20 years, they would be sequestering 8,203 metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalents, which is fantastic. But there are a lot of blank faces in the room. They have no idea what this means. So, <laughs> so I'm interpreting this for you. So this is the impact um, that that would have that would equal, equal annual greenhouse gas emissions from 1,727 passenger vehicles or carbon dioxide emissions from 109 tanker trucks of gasoline or carbon sequestered by 6,724 acres of forest in one year. So it's quite significant. We're talking about a really huge impact that can happen, um, that you can have an impact on climate change and carbon sequestration, water quality, all the associated carb, um, ecosystem benefits out there. So um, that's what we're trying to accomplish. And if you're interested in that, feel free to contact me.
Hi there, um, I'm uh, Brittany Heck, uh, the Executive Director of the Goldridge Resource Conservation District, which is in Sonoma County, and my counterpart. I'm Valerie Minton, with um, Program Director with the Sonoma Resource Conservation District, which is also in Sonoma County, so our RCDs have sort of a special sisterhood yeah. of sharing a county together. Um, so I had a lot of uh, lovely photographs. Um, my partner is a, uh, is a sixth generation sheep farmer, and so I had lots of cute pictures of sheep, but you just get to see a lovely white woolly background today. <laughs> we have this map here, which is um, a map just to kind of locate you. Uh, you can see Marin RCD down there at the bottom, the Goldridge RCD and Sonoma RCD. So you can kind of, if you're in this area, get a sense of where you may be located if you didn't know before. Um, this is just to zoom in a little bit more. This is the Goldridge Resource Conservation District. We're from the Marin County line up to the Russian River and the Laguna de Santa Rosa, kind of Sebastopol, Santa Rosa area to the, to the ocean. And we encompass a lot of watersheds and we actually have quite a number of coastal sheep out, out in our area. And then this is our district, the Sonoma district, um, which sort of wraps around the, the Gold Ridge district and also um, borders the Marin district. And we have lots of watersheds as well and lots of diversity in our district because we cover 85% of Sonoma County. So in addition to um, sheep and rangelands, um, we have lots and lots of vineyards, we have lots of forest land, um, and a lot of urban development as well. So we have, we have a, lot of, a lot of ground to cover there and um, trying to uh, constantly incorporate services for all of these diverse land uses in our district so that we're serving the whole area. Oh, there's one. Um, so this is a, kind of a list of the different types of services that we provide. Um, RCDs do what we call land smart plans, which is basically just a, uh, a way to look at the whole property um, to see if there's areas where you have concerns that you would like to work on um, or, or improvements. Um, we also are going to be rolling out uh, carbon farm plans in our area um, early next year. So right now they're not available in Sonoma County because we've been waiting for Marin uh, to perfect them. And uh, so we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna be uh, uh, catching up. Um, we are also gonna be offering them um, for more than just rangeland. We're gonna be developing carbon farm plan templates for both orchards um, and vineyards and forest land. Um, we do uh, on-farm uh, water resiliency projects, so we do a lot of roof rainwater catchment um, and pond development, so people have uh, sustained water through drought. Um, we do a lot of wildlife enhancement, water quality and erosion control, uh, groundwater monitoring, and a lot of education for both uh, young and old. I just wanted to give a quick example because this is one of the ways that the RCDs have really been able to increase on-farm resiliency the most um, in our area, which is to increase on-farm water security. And I wanted to give you a quick idea. So just a 1,000 square foot roof area um, with one inch of rain catches 623 gallons. And so we've been doing a lot of projects, for instance, on a dairy out here in Bodega. And just from his dairy barns, we're going to be collecting one and a half million gallons every year for his farm to use to water his, um, his cows and uh, to use in his dairy facilities instead of pulling water out of Salmon Creek, which uh, hosts salmon. So uh, we were doing a lot of these types of projects. And then that's over to me. Ooh, this one's loud. Um, but they handed me another microphone so we didn't have to share. So um, this is sort of expanding a little bit on uh, the LandSmart programming that we're doing in Sonoma County. And that also extends to Napa County and Mendocino County. RCDs are also our, our partners in this effort. Um, and so we have, uh, in addition to the RCD's websites, which have tons of resources, we have um, landsmart.org, which is a, a more regional resource that um, has lots of information about what the LandSmart program is all about um, and sort of delving into what it would mean um, for an agricultural land to do a LandSmart plan with us, for instance. And uh, folks can look at all the different materials and really understand the different issues that we get into. Um, and then there's also just a lot of reference materials on there that are helpful in understanding things like um, like rainwater catchment that that Brittany mentioned. 
Um, so Landsmart and Carbon Farm Plans, this has already been talked about so uh, a little bit by Nancy, and we're, our, as Brittany said, our model that we're using in Sonoma County is really building on what the Marin Carbon Project is doing, but um, it's that idea of you know assisting land managers in accomplishing their natural resource goals. That's really important, um, is that it's not a process that's about us as an organization coming in and saying what we think people should do. It's about working together to figure out um, how land managers can meet their goals both for natural resources and how those goals can be married with production. Um, so, you know, we're providing technical assistance, training, and financial support, both to plan and in some cases to implement practices when we're able to bring in those grant funds from agencies like those Nancy mentioned. Coastal Conservancy, USDA have been um, big supporters up front, and we're always looking for more ways to bring those state and federal dollars locally to help people on the ground, because we think that's some of the best use out there for those, those types of funds is really helping um, individual landowners to meet these um, sort of multi-benefit goals. And uh, we're already doing these, these land smart plans that, that uh, touch on multiple resource goals. Um, we've been doing that for the last year or so, I think. Um, and we've seen um, a lot of engagement, particularly from the vineyard community um, and some from the livestock community as well in Sonoma County. And so in 2016, we're expecting that in early 2016, we'll be adding a carbon farm plan chapter. And so the idea of that is, you know, we have this big long list of things we cover in a plan because it really is supposed to be a comprehensive look at the property. Um, and so the idea is that when we add a carbon farm plan chapter, that's something where we'll be looking at, um, you know, many different aspects of the property, um, including water quality and stormwater management and, um, you know, managing water resources for things like roof water catchment. And so looking at all of that as a whole and then adding in the sort of the lens of carbon farming to that because there are so many of these things, um, these different types of practices that meet multiple goals. And so that's the, the goal of our process is um, and our really is our, the RCDs and the landowners we work with because it's a process that we work through together. So the goal of that process is to, um, to identify practices that can uh, meet multiple benefits, including carbon farming benefits. Um, so I just wanted to do a little shout out <laughs> about the climate beneficial wool. So one of the things we're really excited about in our district um, is we've already been getting calls from sheep growers who are interested in saying, can we have a carbon farm plan? Because we really want to participate in carbon beneficial wool. Um, and I think that, did you share about this earlier today? Um, so basically, um, I'm going to probably botch this a little bit, but in, by doing a carbon farm plan and into implementing the practices that are in that plan, there's been carbon life cycle analysis that basically say that you could have wool that is uh, carbon negative. Um, <laughs> and so basically, by wearing wool clothing, you are uh, sequestering carbon. And what this has done, um, um, and it would be really lovely to hear Becca talk about this, is you can get a, a much higher price for your wool and a different market for your wool. And so um, there's one example in the, Mod in the Modoc, as I like to call it, in Modoc County, where um, the wool grower has received twice as much as his usual payment for his wool. Oh, and they're here, which is great. <laughs> um, um, and so we're, we've gotten a lot of calls in our area from people who are interested, and so we're really excited to be able to help them with the first step, which is getting the carbon farm plan down and, and creating these lists of practices that then we'll work to achieve to get implementation funding for so that they can uh, participate in this uh, emerging market. And that's it. But thank you all. I forgot to say one thing, which is that Valerie and I uh, brought these um, landowner interest forms. So if you're interested in um, getting on our list for the carbon farm plan, this is our first time offering uh, people to sign up um, to, to get more information later on. We'll have these and we'll put them on the front table here. And one One note to add on that as well is that sometimes folks in Sonoma County have trouble figuring out which district serves them um, because we have kind of funny district lines that, that were drawn many, many years ago. And so if you're in Sonoma County and you're interested and you don't know which of us to send it to, 
just send it to one of us and we'll figure it out and we'll let you know uh, which, which district you, uh, your property is located in. And we gave people this. this Roughly. Yeah. Roughly. Mm -hmm. Everyone has that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you want to take a couple of questions from the audience? Um, so if there, and I know Leslie, you have already engaged with your RCD. And you've been letting us know how it's been going, and thank you for doing that. Is there anyone in the audience who has a question for the resource conservation districts? Hazel, yes. And you say it loud, and I'll repeat it. Where is the huge amount of compost going to come from? I think, Hazel, you're on 1,500 acres. So maybe 20 to 100 acres of compostable land on 1,000 acres. So what would be, if, if her interest is compost, and what do you think? <laughs> you can start. Almost. Hello. You can use this one. <laughs> I'll just <vote> over. <laughs> Okay, so, um, well, we have a couple of ways. Um, one is that, uh, at least in our district, we have put together a compost facility with the hope that that would be addressed. Um, and that compost facility is, is taking in uh, dairy waste, equestrian waste, um, and some of the county's uh, green waste, uh, roadside green waste. And so by taking all of those resource streams, we're hoping that we can then um, turn, that into a, a res turn that into a resource. <laughs> and um, so that's one way. Another way is that depending on your particular uh, management on the ranch that you have, I mean, we have some folks who are in, in the program and developing their own um, compost facilities at the ranch. So, um, and they're looking at actually receiving um, some outside dollars to do that. So you can apply to USDA and their EQIP program, Environmental Quality Incentive Program, to help put together like the compost facility itself. Um, but also on a statewide level, there's more work being done. Um, the state is under a lot of pressure to develop um, compost facilities, reduce waste um, into our landfills. And so I think you w we would expect to see in years to come that you'll see a lot more uh, compost available um, through these compost facilities because the state's under a lot of pressure to, to create those. And I think I would just add, because I think uh, part of Hazel's concern is that in Sonoma County, our compost facility shut down. And um, there's a lot of people um, thinking about, about how to uh, replace and even make better some kind of composting facility in Sonoma County to keep in our green waste, um, as well as both RCDs have been investigating possibilities of setting up a remote uh, assistance, kind of what Nancy was talking about with potentially dairies setting up composting facilities out there. So we are definitely thinking about um, that need and trying to see what we can do. Okay, I think that if that if there's questions can be asked to these as women as individuals. Um, so we're gonna go into our break. I want to thank you all for coming. Thank you. <laughs>